Hi, my name is Garlic. I am the founder of the Urban Herb School based in Vancouver, BC. And today you find us out and about because today is Nettles Day. It's actually Nettles Month for the Urban Herb School. So we're out at my favorite Nettles patch, which I'm not going to tell you where that is yet. <laughs> Welcome everybody. I, I really like to teach outside. The whole premise of the Urban Herb School is to connect people like yourselves with live plants that are all around. To really take down that barrier that exists where people are afraid to touch and interact and taste, especially with, with the wild living world around us. So let's talk about nettles. Now a lot of people have heard of nettles, uh, first by their maybe more common name called stinging nettles. and. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize that they're food. But not only are they food, but they're about the most nutritious food that we have access to. Uh, and in this video, I want to share with you three things. Uh, the first one is how to identify it. Because you want to make sure before you go eating wild foods that you know what they are. Two is how to deal with the sting, whether you've been stung or whether you're wanting to prepare it into food. And uh, three is I'm going to tell you my most important reason why I think that nettles should be eaten by everybody in the spring. So the first thing to know when you're looking for nettles is that they love to have wet feet, which means they like really wet soil. They also tend to like really rich soil. So sometimes you can find them near composts. Uh, they are really good at uh, taking out uh, the excess nitrogen from high rich places. So uh, horse stables or um, Places where there's lots of animal manure sometimes have a really huge patch of nettles. Oftentimes you can just go to a local lake or river that is in a disturbed area because this nettles isn't a native species. It comes into places that have already been disturbed where the, most of the natural forest is, um, has at least been replaced. So when you find a nettle plant, you approach it, uh, it can, they can vary in size depending on the, the time of the year. I've seen them grow up to even five feet tall. So uh, what you want to look for is that the leaves are in pairs and that they're opposite. And you can see that here. Take this guy off. The second thing that I look for is the shape of the leaf. The leaf has this very triangular shape to it. It has teeth all the way around the outside that aren't too pointy and are really consistent in their size and shape. Okay, so the third thing is to get in close and to notice the little white hairs. Some folks are surprised to find out lots of plants have hairs. In fact, most plants have hair. These ones are, are special because they have venom inside. If you're not sure, the dark green, purple leaf, triangular shaped, opposite leaves hasn't given it away, then if you rub the side of your hand against one of those little hairs or against the stem, then it'll give you a little bite. And, uh, and that's a for sure sign that it's nettles. That bite, that sting will go away. I know of three remedies that I've had varying degrees of success with. The first is yellow dock, which when you rub up the, the wet leaf onto the sting, it helps to neutralize the formic acid that's causing the irritation. The second is plantain. You can chew it up and then use it as a spit poultice to help take down the inflammation and the irritation. Or you can actually crush up the nettle leaf and rub that on there. The best way to, to I think, deal with the sting is wear rubber gloves if you need to, if it really bothers you. And also just work on experiencing the sensation because it's not terrible. A lot of people find they like it. And if you have arthritis, then it's particularly good uh, on those arthritic joints because it can really bring a lot of circulation and relieve pain. So now, of course, we got to figure out what to do with this. Sure, we can know all the reasons why we want to eat it, but what do we do with it when it's covered in all of these little uh, stinging hairs? And there's two real easy things to do. One is to just dry them, and you can take a couple, maybe four or five, and bind them with an elastic and hang them upside down to dry, or pull the leaves off and lay them out to dry, and they should be dry in a night or so. Or cook with it. I would take a plant about a foot and a half, two feet tall, cut it into three or four or five pieces and throw it into a stir fry. It's fantastic. If you don't want to eat it, then you can just add it to any soup broth 
and cook it for a while and then take it out before you serve it. And that way you're still getting all of the nutritional and medicinal value in your soup and into your body. Um, and if you're really daring, you can juice it. But you need a, a good handful. Now keep in mind that as the season progresses and the plant gets closer to flowering, that it dries out, it gets a lot woodier, and if you want to cook with it, then the soup broth is going to be your only option. Let me say that nettles are actually my favorite vegetable. There's so many ways to eat them, and I love them all. So point number three that I want to share is my, my top reason for why I think it's important for people to eat nettles as a spring food. But in order to understand that, I need to explain a little bit about how I approach plants. Because I'm not a nutritionist. I, I don't get super excited about all of the details when it comes to plants. But I do get really excited about, about meeting new characters, let's say. So I approach plants in this way of recognizing them as all having their own distinct and unique personality. They all have their own shape, their own way that they grow, where they like to grow, uh, they have their own chemistry. And what I've found with nettles and what I've found with other plants is that they really have this uh, quite surprising to a lot of people capacity to help, help us with healing our emotional bodies, to help us with healing our emotional selves. And what nettles does is it, it helps us to let go of things that we fear. In winter, we're just coming out of winter and coming into spring. Emotionally, we're moving from the season of uh, of fear into the season of growth. And this plant is so important to help with that transition. Now medicinally, this plant, we can see some of its uses traditionally and how they relate to that. Uh, it's adaptogenic, which means that it supports the adrenal glands. It's really effective at helping our body to come down out of a panic and out of a fear state. Or if we've been in a panic fear state, to recover from that and to, to nourish our body and help us to find calm. Okay, so that was nettles. And I hope that you're at least half as excited as I am about taking nettles in as food uh, and going out to hunt for them. So come on out to the wild and start looking for them. If you want more information about nettles or other herb stuff, you can go to my website, uh, urbanherbschool.ca. If you have questions, if you have feedback, if you have stories, a lot of people have nettle stories, I'm totally excited to hear your stories about nettles and to work on creating more community and more dialogue about these lost foods from our diet. And keep your eyes out because we're going to be doing more of these and having lots of fun out in the woods around Vancouver.